I was recently made aware by one of our many XJW followers on our social sites that the Watchtower organization, the Jehovah's Witnesses, teach that the 144,000 are the Israel of God only. So if you go to JW.org, the desire for peace and security worldwide, it says that just as the ancient nation of Israel was in a covenant relationship with Jehovah God through the mediator Moses, so the nation of spiritual Israel, the Israel of God, has a covenant relationship through a mediator. Galatians 6.16 It is, as the Apostle Paul wrote to his Christian fellow worker, there's one God, one mediator between God and man, a man, Christ Jesus. Was Moses the mediator between Jehovah God and mankind in general? No. He was the mediator between the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and the nation of their fleshly descendants. Likewise, the greater Moses, Jesus Christ, is not the mediator between Jehovah God and all mankind. He is the mediator between his heavenly father, Jehovah God, and the nation of spiritual Israel, which is limited to only 144,000 members. This spiritual nation is like a little flock of Jehovah's sheep-like ones, Romans 9, 6, Revelation 7, 4. And again, in another section, who made up that remnant of spiritual Israelites anointed with Holy Spirit of Jehovah God? The facts of history identify them. They were the ones concerning whom Jesus Christ said in his prophecy about the conclusion of the system of things. Then people will deliver you up to tribulation and will kill you, and you will become objects of hatred by all the nations on account of my name. Matthew 24, 9. Those spirit-anointed Christians upon whom those prophetic words had their fulfillment since 1914 were the faithful Bible students known as Jehovah's Christian Witnesses. Their Christ-like neutral position toward national politics, revolutions, and international wars is well known worldwide and has focused upon them the hatred and persecution by Christendom and also nations no part of Christendom. Nevertheless, they're loved by Jehovah their God. As it were, they are in his loving embrace, a fact that is suggested in the prophet's name, Habakkuk. The real sales pitch at the door when a Jehovah's Witness comes along is basically this. Let us come in and study the Bible with you, persuade you of our teachings, and eventually baptize you into the Watchtower, or Jehovah himself. But we're not New Testament Christians. Only the special 144,000, they alone go to heaven. While we inherit the earth, only the 144,000 remain in heaven forever with Jesus, never to return. So next time you meet a Jehovah's Witness either at your door, at your house, or anywhere else, ask them about this sales pitch, if this is true or not. But is this really what the New Testament is teaching? Here is the Jerusalem Bible version of the verse. It does not matter if a person is circumcised or not. What matters is for him to become an altogether new creature, peace and mercy to all who follow this rule, who form the Israel of God. Philippians 3.3, 3, we are the circumcision, says Paul, we whose worship is spiritual. Now, this is obviously a fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecy, which Paul touches upon in Romans 9. So in part, he says, not all those who descend from Israel are Israel. Not all the descendants of Abraham are his children. It is not physical descent that decided who are the children of God. It's only the children of the promise who will count as the true descendants. Well, we are those people, whether we were Jews or Gentiles, we are the ones he has called. And the Apostle Peter obviously concurs with this, and he also alludes to the Old Testament prophecy. You also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. You are a chosen people, that's from Isaiah, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, Exodus 19, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people of God, once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. 
So as you can see there, I added the Old Testament allusions there or citations that Peter seems to be teaching from. And again, back to Paul, Ephesians 2. Remember that formerly, you who are Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcision by those who call themselves circumcision were separate from Messiah, excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenants of promise. But now you're no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household. Now, I could show you more, but in this short video, nowhere do I see here that the apostles are talking to the 144,000 only or any special little group within the larger Christian world. So there's obviously here a JW identity crisis have created what some call a two-class system. So you have Christians being the 144,000 only. And by that, I mean, they're the only ones who have been anointed, have the spirit, are born again, are really called saints. So the people coming at your door, they obviously would not think they are of the 144,000. Please ask them and see what they say. So it's only this group who belong to promises, really. The promises that were of the Israel of the flesh, as Paul calls them, which have now been given or being said about the Christian church made up of, as we saw, as we read, Jews and Gentiles, regardless. So this is the New Testament's one class system. A Christian can be anyone, Jew or Gentile, man or woman. There are no special groups, no special levels. There's one spirit, says Paul in 1 Corinthians 12, one baptism, one body, one church. There is no class system within the church. This is just an unthinkable, unbiblical scheme. And remember, all of us who call ourselves Christians are supposed to have the Spirit, are supposed to be born again, are supposed to be saint or striving to be perfect as I am perfect, God says. And again, please check out what Paul says in Romans 8. If you don't have the Spirit of Christ, Paul says there, then you have the Spirit of Antichrist. So who are the 144,000 according to the New Testament? Well, they're simply the regathered ethnic 12 Jewish tribes. They're Jews. They're not Gentiles. This is from Revelation 7. They will come out of the great future tribulation. There is no 144,000 at the moment. This has to do with the future prophecy that goes all the way back to Daniel 12 and obviously to Jesus when he talked about the great tribulation being yet in the future. It hasn't come yet. JWs believe that this began in 1914, just before the outbreak of World War I. But this is just an impossibility. JWs believe that it was only then that an invisible resurrection of this 144 began. And then a couple of years later, 1918 or so, and I say or so because there's so-called new light coming in all the time in the organization. So I may be outdated here, but... A couple of years after 1914, they believed that Jesus came and is here invisibly, reigning. And he's been reigning, they say, for the last 79 years now. There's one hope, one church, one faith. Dr. James Dunn says in his Theology of Paul that he readily addresses the largely Gentile congregations in Rome and elsewhere as beloved by God, called to be saints. God's elect, that is, using epithets, which had marked out the distinctiveness of Israel's self-understanding. This concept of God's kingdom, as it appears in Paul, seems to lack all national features and to have become a universal expression of God's rule. Perhaps we may see here an echo of what was Jesus' central theme, the kingdom of God. So this whole topic is obviously wrapped up by the future coming of the kingdom of God on earth and not in heaven. No one's going to go to heaven. And Jesus is coming back to earth as he promised in Acts 1. Yet JWs believe that Jesus basically will never be seen from again. He will never actually touch ground, touch the earth again, because he's already here and 
he along with the 144,000 will remain invisibly here somehow and also in heaven.